boxes. So, um, I am a boxing fan, okay? I want everybody to know I love boxing. I, I was raised off watching boxing with my mother. My mother, my mother could box. Like, we love boxing. Well, anyway, um, I Mike Tyson was one of my boxers that I really liked. And he is the one that compelled me to want to go live this morning. Okay? So, this morning I got up and I was curious to know. Um, I googled Mike Tyson's old house and then I googled his new house. Okay? So, um, when you research his old house, excuse me guys. When you research Mike Tyson's old house, you will see that um, they will show the different mansions that he had through life. So they showed the very first mansion um, that he lost when he went to prison. And then it showed another mansion that he lost when he was in financial strain. And then the a mansion that he lost um, that he walked away from in a marriage. And then his 2020 mansion, okay? So I thought about something. I wanted to share um, this with someone out there um at first i shared it with myself um that oftentimes it's so many people uh get discouraged by what their beginning look like like we all know if god really told us what we had to go through it'll scare the hell out of, out of us right so um it's a lot of people when they tell their story um, their beginning was horrible. Okay, even their middle. Like, um, they couldn't win for losing. Um, uh, it's a lot of people that when they tell their beginning, people look at them like, you don't look like what you've been through. Understand? And so, I thought about um, Job on this morning. I thought about how um, he was told something not knowing that he was about to lose everything. Okay? So, in the early parts of Job's story, um, he was told this. He was told that um, your future will be brighter, but far than your past. Okay? And so, I'm going to do it in another version. Uh, it says this. Though your beginning was insufficient, your end will greatly increase. And consider and apply yourself to the things searched out by your fathers. Okay. So, it's it, I, I, it's this other hood version that I love in the Bible. The message is talk more like how I talk. And I'm going to end it with this. It says, even though you're not much right now. Y'all hear this? Even though you're not much right now, you'll end up better than ever. So, I had to go live to tell somebody, I don't care what it look like right now. Because I understand, because I, I was going to, I didn't know someone had tried me with what they felt like I might be struggling with now. And I, and I had to go live instead of allowing anger to stay in me, right? So, I understand that people love, love to bring up things they think are hurt you, like your current situations, your current struggles. And it's okay. Because struggles, bad situations don't last always. I had to talk to myself and tell myself, let me let that motivate me. Because people speak their truth. Like, you can't change what people think about you. So, um, I had to respect how they felt and felt and what they wanted to say. And so I said, well, let me make that be something better for me. Let me allow that to motivate me than to, um, curse them out, beat the hell out of them, or, you know, wake up angry, go to bed angry because I can't change what people think, but because people love to bring up your past or even your current struggles. People love that. But they had to be careful when they do that. Um, and so I understand that a lot of people didn't uh, know what type of hand they was going to get dealt 
but they made the best out of it. They played it how it was dealt to them, understand? So uh, win, lose, or draw, it's your testimony and it's your story. So I just got on this live in the middle of me cooking breakfast to tell you guys that your younger years, like your 20s, your 30s, and even your 40s might have been purity hell. You tried your best to do whatever it is to be better. But life threw you evictions. Life threw you homelessness. Now, I'm talking to joy. Life threw you heartache. Life threw you headache. Life threw you pain. Life threw you all of that. But y'all, I don't know. I'm the queen of get crunk. Understand? I, I love to be excited. Like, this is my day off. But I always get excited uh, for possibilities, okay? Um, yesterday is gone. And I think about Mike Tyson once again. Uh, Mike Tyson had this big old mansion in New Jersey, right? Everybody said it was the end. That's how God loved people to say, it's over for you. You know you you can't get that back. You will never be blessed again. You understand what I'm saying? That's how people do. They look at, oh, you can't ever get a husband. You cheated with a married man before. You can't have children. You had abortions before. You can't this and that. You know how people love it. Well, I love when people know my dirt because evidently they don't know the man that I serve that I confidently call my big daddy. See, I love when people throw up, well, what I can't get because I've done X, Y, Z, or I still do it, or I still might struggle with it. They love to say what he ain't gonna do and what I'm not gonna get. Lord have mercy. So, could y'all imagine all the people telling Mike Tyson, man, it's over for you. The heavyweight champion, you broke and you're broken. You don't lost a child. You don't lost a home. You lost marriages. Your life is over. And when I Google Mike Tyson's 2020 home, God gave him something better than what he had when he had a bunch of money. The home, the first home was brought at 20 million dollars the home that he's in now looks better it's in a better place and it only cost him three million lord hammers so what you're trying to say jay this is what i'm trying to tell see in man eyes it's over for you because they know your dirt they know your doodle they know what you did last night they know what you did yesterday they know what you even plan to do today but guess what i love the man again i say who i call my big daddy he love when people be talking about you so i don't be shamed I don't go hide up under the rock. I'll be just as ready for whatever because I understand that um, who I serve. I serve a father that gave me grace every day. I serve a father that gave me mercy every day. I serve a father that forgive me, forgave me because he gave up his son for me. So understand this, that when, he, when I rise up and he choose that he want to make my ladder better, it doesn't matter who knows about how I started off? Because let me tell you something. People don't want to celebrate you. People going to say, I remember when. I remember when they had holes in their drawers. I remember when they was doing this. You know how. Because people not going to celebrate. Don't wait on people to celebrate. I celebrate by myself. Okay? Because... Don't nobody know my story like me and Big Daddy. And people only know what I release to give out. But at the end of the day, how, well, the reason why I celebrate is this. He's there with me here. And then he's there with me up here. So regardless of whatever state I'm in, he's with me. So I wanted to encourage each and every one of you guys out there that's in a struggle that's in a shameful situation, that you feel like you have lost everything, let me tell you something about this man that I call Big Daddy. When he reward you and give you your greater and your better, it won't cost you. You won't have to do nothing strange for no change. He's going to give you better and it's going to cost you lesser. So today, get excited. Stay excited and whatever negativity you hear about yourself and when people want to use hurtful things to try to hurt you, embrace that. Sh I almost curse. Embrace that stuff. Why? Because it's going to help you appreciate 
your greater. I love you guys. Have an amazing day. Mm.